This is a CBS 4 News update. Good morning, I'm Lauren Pastrana. Pembroke Pines police are looking for the driver who struck and killed a teen that was riding a bike. Police say someone passing by saw the teen lying on the ground around 8 o'clock Monday night. It happened on Northwest 196th Avenue north of Pines Boulevard. The teen was rushed to the hospital but later died. Investigators don't have a description of the vehicle or the driver. Police also said nobody has come forward as a witness. If you know anything about this crash, you're asked to call police or Crime Stoppers. The family of a South Florida man who was shot and killed at a Kendale Lakes party is making a plea for help. Investigators say 40-year-old Yamil Arguelles was killed shortly after arriving with his spouse. Police say the bullet that hit him did not come from the home and that no one at the party was involved. Detectives are trying to figure out where the shot came from and who is responsible. Definitely bizarre and it's kind of uh, baffling at this time to investigators and they're just trying to get everything they can together to um, bring closure and to help this, uh, this young man's family. We're told Arguelles is a father of two small children. If you have any information on his murder, call Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. Funeral arrangements have been finalized for a Miami-Dade police officer who died in the line of duty last week. A viewing for officer Jermaine Brown will be held Thursday night at the Sweet Home Missionary Baptist Church in Cutler Bay. A celebration of life honoring him will be held Friday morning at the same church. Brown died last Wednesday when he lost control of an ATV he was riding and struck a tree in southwest Miami-Dade. He was a 15-year veteran of the force. Red tide is apparently making it more difficult to catch stone crabs in Florida's southern waters. According to a report in the New York Times, the prolonged effects of the algae bloom could be a major factor in smaller catches for fishermen. A crustacean researcher in Sarasota told the paper red tide not only increases mortality rates in the crabs, but also kills off their larvae. Red tide overran Florida's Gulf Coast this summer and was also seen here on the East Coast, powered in part from an algae bloom in Lake Okeechobee. Now, CBS4 Weather with meteorologist Lisette Gonzalez. Happy Tuesday. It is a beautiful start to the day once again, but chilly. And despite all that sunshine, the bright blue skies were in the upper 50s for Miami and Fort Lauderdale. 67 in Key West, the radar and satellite quiet and dry as high pressure still hanging on, providing for a pleasant afternoon. Highs will be a little warmer, and we're seeing uh, the upper 70s as we get into the afternoon. As we take a look at tonight's forecast, not as chilly, but still cool along the coast low 60s inland areas always colder with the upper 50s now tomorrow we'll start to see the changes moisture moving in clouds increasing and also the chance for some showers especially late Wednesday Thursday though is our active day storms likely some strong to severe we could see some gusty winds periods of heavy rain localized flooding even an isolated tornado and right now the time frame appears to be later in the day into the afternoon and evening and then overnight it's still unsettled into Friday morning could see some lingering showers and it'll turn windy Friday for the first official day of winter as we'll see highs not as warm. We're going to drop those temperatures and we'll see low 70s by Saturday morning. A chilly start again. Once the front clears, our lows will fall to the 50s. Highs in the upper 60s, cooler and drier even through Sunday when highs will be right around 73 and into Christmas Eve on Monday, 76 degrees. It'll feel nice. Lauren. Lisa, thank you. That's the news for now. You can always find us on CBSMiami.com and tune into CBS4 News at 5, 6, 7, and 11 for all of today's important headlines.